Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Rowan and today we're going to look at how to debug a Python container app whilst it's running in Azure. I want to say thanks for the suggestion for this video. I had a lot of fun making it. I had a lot of fun playing around with the technology. So the app we're actually going to use to demo this is the same one from my fast API video. There'll be a link down below to that video and to the repo where this code lives. So you can just grab it and play with it yourself. This is the app running right now. We're just going to grab the IP address and test that it works. So if we go to a new tab, we paste that in, we do slash hello slash Rowan, and it's going to output, hello Rowan, how are you? So that's running on Azure. Now we're going to go and look how we're going to debug this. So we're going to jump over to Visual Studio Code. I really like doing debugging here because I really like the way it hands debugging profiles, and it's particularly good for remote debugging, which is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using a library called DebugPy. My friend Sam would have a go at me if I didn't recommend at this point you use a virtual environment for this. But I'm just going to do it straight on my machine. In the terminal, we're going to do pip install DebugPy. And I've already got this, so it's going to warn me that I don't need to install it. But for you, it will come up with kind of something similar. The most important thing you need to know is the version number here. And it will say the version number when it installs it for you for the first time. So we're going to take that version number. And we're going to go to our requirements.txt. And we're going to add debugpy double equals our version number so that our container knows the right thing to install as well. So we'll save that and go back to our main application. And now we're going to put in import debugpy. And then right underneath, we're going to have debugpy.listen. We're going to have it listen on our local host IP. And we're going to have it on port 5678. Now, you want to call debugpy.listen as soon as possible, really, because it won't start debugging anything from before that. So as soon as this is called, it's then going to start debugging things afterwards. There are also a couple of other functions that debugpy has, which basically let you do things like check if it's actually doing the debug so you can make sure that it's started before you try to use it. I'm not worried about that too much right now. I kind of trust that it's going to be started when I want to call it. So now for the code, we literally just need to save this and push this. So we'll save that and we'll make a new build for it. We need to go back to Azure. We need to get our container registry connection string. So we need the login server and then back to VS Code. Now I'm already logged in here. If you need any advice on how to do all this stuff, it is in the other fast API container video. So go and check that out. We're going to do docker build dash t for our tag server name slash fast api because that's what we called the other container colon and i'm going to give it the build tag build dash debug we do want it to stand out from the one that's already there in the container registry and i put the dot at the end and we're just going to build that and now that's done we're going to do docker push and have the same build tag and there we go that's pushed up to azure and now we just need to go and do some stuff with the container instance itself to get this working so back over in azure in our container registry if we go to repositories and click on fast api we can now see that we've got both build tags. So build one was our original one and build debug is the new one we just created. So we know that the container image is there now. If we go to our resource group. The container instance that's currently there, actually we need a couple of different settings. It doesn't let you change just in the portal. So the easiest way for us is we're literally just going to stop the current container instance, delete it and make a new one. It's very, very fast and easy. So you go to create container instances, create that. Okay, so we'll give it a name, ACI fast API debug. For image source, we're going to go to Azure Container Registry. And now we actually have the selection of two build tags. So we're going to click the debug one. And the other thing we have to do, go to networking. This is very important. We need to add 5678 as a TCP to our ports. And this is the port that lets you talk to the remote debugger. If you don't do this, it won't be able to find it. So now that's up, we'll just hit review and create. And we'll create that. So now that's deployed, we're going to go to the resource. And um, we're going to go to the IP address and copy that and just make sure it works. So paste that in. We do slash hello slash Rowan again, and we can see it's working like usual. So we know that it's deployed properly. Now, if we hop back over to Visual Studio Code, we're going to do our debugging. So if we go to run and add configuration, we want to do remote attach. It's going to ask us for the IP address. So that's actually on our clipboard at the moment because we copied it when we were testing in the browser. So we have our IP. We have the port number. And that's going to generate for us a launch.json. This is going to help us debug it. Now, the important thing for this is to note the local route and the remote route. Now, what this basically is referring to is what does your local directory look like compared to what the remote directory looks like? When you're remote debugging, your local setup and your remote setup, particularly the file paths and names and stuff, have to match each other. So it identifies your local file and the remote one as the same thing. For us, it's okay, but if you have any problems around that, this is where you come and check what they look like to make sure that they sync up. So that's okay for us. We're going to go back here. We can now go to run, start debugging. 
I know it's debugging, it doesn't visually look super different, but if we go down to here and we put a breakpoint in, back over on our browser, we're going to go to our example and I'm going to refresh that. And now we can see our breakpoint has been hit. We're officially remotely debugging a container in Azure. And if we check the name variable by highlighting it, Rowan, that's the one we passed in. And there you go. A quick, easy way to show you how to remotely debug a Python container application running in Azure. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If there's anything more you want to see around this kind of thing, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching.